Hey guys, welcome back to All in Law. This is a medical video lecture, physiology. And today we're going to talk about dorsal, spinal, cerebellar tract. Okay. In the previous videos, we discussed about the anterior spinothalamic tract, the lateral spinothalamic tract, and what you call the ventral cere spinocerebellar tract. In this video, we're going to talk about this dorsal spinocerebellar tract. So, as the ventral, what you call ventral spinocerebellar tract, has different names, this also has different names. It's called by Flushig. Flushig tract, okay, or direct spinocerebellar tract. Tract or posterior spinocerebellar tract, as dorsal means the posterior, so it's called as a posterior spinocerebellar tract. So you know this what you call the tract the what is the peculiarity of this is they have what you call they are formed by uncrossed fibers we're gonna talk about that uncrossed fibers so remember the fibers do not cross like we see in the lateral spinothalamic tract and what you call the anterior spinothalamic tract and even in anterior spinocerebellar tract the fibers have crossed to the opposite side but in this the fibers do not cross to the opposite side means they run on the same side okay that's a real what you call uh, um, uh, peculiarity of this what you call uh, dorsal spinocerebellar tract and what is the function what what do they carry is uh, uh, what you call the carry for a subconscious kinesthetic sensation as we saw in anterior spinocerebral tract same thing they carry right guys so let's talk about the location of this if you talk about the location the dorsal spinocerebral tract is situated in the lateral column in the lateral column along the posterior lateral periphery of the spinal cord along posterior along the posterior lateral posterior lateral periphery of the what you call spinal cord okay right and it is situated posterior to the ventral spinocerebellar tract and anterior to the entry of posterior nerve root okay posterior nerve root so it's situated posterior to the ventral cerebral tract but anterior to the posterior nerve root right so let me draw the diagram and show you guys i'm not good at drawing the pictures okay so let's talk about the first order neuron take the different color okay so the fibers of this tract origin from the dorsal nucleus of Clark so this is what right so um, situated in the posterior gray matter of the spinal cord okay and the first appearance of the fibers is in the upper lumbar segment remember upper lumbar segment okay um, then from the lower lumbar and the sacral segment, the impulse are carried upwards by the dorsal nerve root to the upper lumbar segments. Means if you have to draw the diagram like this, let me show you. The uncross, the axons from the neurons in the dorsal nucleus of Clark. This is going to be Clark. This is, let me draw over here. Okay. This is dorsal spinal tract. Okay. This is a first order neuron. Right. And this is let me change the color guys okay the second order neuron is this that is what you call dorsal nucleus of clark from here they ascend like this right guys on the same side look at this they don't cross 
so this is second order neuron and this is what you call nucle what you call dorsal nucleus of clock clock let me write here because of the lack of space okay dorsal nucleus of clock where the second order neuron starts okay all right and they reach the lateral column of the same side remember the same side remember the same side guys same side it's on the same side okay then these fibers ascend through the other spinal segments and reach what you call medulla oblongata okay they reach the medulla oblongata medulla oblongata m o right and uh, what you call uh, from here the fibers reach cerebellum through the inferior cerebellar peduncle as we saw let me draw here let me draw here okay this is inferior this is third order neuron starts from here okay and this is inferior okay cerebellar peduncle so you know that the anterior spinal cerebellar tract they what they did was uh, they end in a superior cerebellar peduncle of opposite side but this has crossed on the same side but inferior cerebellar peduncle so from here they reach what you call cerebral cerebellum right okay guys that's it right so they originated from here dorsal nucleus of the clock and started with the that's and it's situated in the posterior gray matter of the spinal cord right and they are uncrossed and they run on the lateral column of the same side then these fiber ascend from other spinal cords and reach the middle oblongata okay and from the middle oblongata to what you call um, end up in the second uh, uh, neurons end in the what you call inferior cerebral peduncle and from inferior peduncle the third neuron starts and end up in the what you call cerebellum right and the fibers of this truck end in the cortex of the anterior lobe of the where does they end this is the position if you ask me location of this is anterior lobe of cerebellum same along with what you call ventral spinocerebellar tract ventral spinocerebellar tract right so they both uh, end together over here but remember the ventral spinal spinocerebral tract of opposite side not of the same side right but few bubbles can end on the same side also okay what's the function as i said along with the ventral spinal cerebral tract the dorsal spinal cerebral tract carries the impulse of subconscious kinesthetic sensation which are known as non sensory impulses right let me write here subconscious kinesthetic sensation which are known as non sensory impulses and what happens when there is a lesion unilateral loss of the what happens unilateral loss of subconscious kinesthetic sensation occurs in the lesion of this tract on the same side as these tracts have uncrossed fibers because of uncrossed fibers you will lose the what you call sensation of the same side right guys so thank you so much for watching this video i'm sure you got an idea about the dorsal spinal cerebral tract Please do subscribe to our channel and please do share our videos with your friends. Thank you so much. Take care.